Hi, welcome to The Inner Way. I'm your host, Father David Smith. Uh, we're going to continue our look at the great spiritual classic, Unseen Warfare. Uh, it always comes up in front of me when I talk about it. Nevertheless, I hope you have been enjoying and will continue to enjoy this uh, work as much as I have. Now, we're getting into the uh, 20th chapter of part one of the book, and uh, the 20th chapter is entitled, How to Overcome Negligence how to overcome negligence. This is something that is really uh, is a problem for everyone. Negligence is not doing what you should be doing. Now, it's easy for us to focus on sins that we commit. In other words, when we do something that we shouldn't be doing. Those kinds of things come up all the time and they're constantly on our mind and we see them, we feel them. But the sins of negligence are different because we can, when we become negligent about something, praying in the morning, reading the scriptures, whatever, going to church, whatever the case may be. When we become negligent, negligence becomes a habit and, and uh, as the church fathers would call it, a passion. A passion is, a, is sin we commit without the need of any temptation. So I, I know that I've spoken to people who, you know, they get up on Sunday morning and they automatically d don't think of going to the church. It, that's not on their mind. It hasn't been on their mind all week and it's not on their mind on Sunday morning. And then every once in a while, there'll be something important at church and so they'll go or they'll just feel like, you know, gee, it's been a long, long time since I've gone to church. Maybe I'll go to church. This is negligence. Negligence sets into us and kind of burrows its way in. Skipping prayer time in the morning. I have struggled with that uh, for years. And uh, I can remember 20, 30, 40 years ago, uh, just being very frustrated with, you know, getting up in the morning and, you know, kind of getting my day started. I usually have a lot to do. I have a lot on my mind. I like to get the day started right away. And then to think after a certain amount of time goes by to think, wait a minute, you know, I want to start each day with prayer and I have neglected that. And it has become this passion within me. It's become a habit that I need to work very hard uh, to get rid of, to overcome. I'm reading from a part of the chapter, and I'm, I'm going to actually read a fair amount of it because I think uh, Unseen Warfare has some great advice for us, for us on this count. Let the conviction never leave your thought that a single raising of your mind to God and a single humble genuflection to his glory and in his honor has infinitely more value than all the treasures of the world that every time we banish negligence and force ourselves to do the work we should with diligence, angels in heaven prepare for us the crown of a glorious victory, and that, on the contrary, not only has God no crowns for the negligent, but that little by little he takes back from them the gifts he had bestowed upon them for their former diligence in his service. 
and will finally deprive them of his kingdom if they continue to be negligent, as he said in the parable of the guests bidden to supper, who were too lazy to come. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Such is the lot of the negligent. So there are there are two aspects to this you know what we sometimes call the carrot and the stick there is the benefit of of overcoming negligence and of gaining the crowns that are being uh, uh, made for us by the angels. You know, and this is a way of saying that when we are diligent in our spiritual life, that has eternal and heavenly benefits. There are benefits to that. But at the same time, Unseen Warfare wants to remind us that when we continue in our negligence, there are penalties. And even to the point where it says God, who has given you eternal blessings uh, because of your diligence in doing his will, will begin to take those away to the point where you even make yourself unworthy of the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, this is, this, uh, I don't know about you, but when I hear this, I really, uh, it, it concerns me. I am, I, you know, sometimes I am just so busy, I'm so whatever, that, for instance, I will forget to pray in the morning. Now, there's no law written in the Bible that says if you don't pray in the morning, you're going to go to hell. It doesn't say that. But I know from my experience and from passages in the Psalms and so on and so forth, but I know from my own experience that when I pray in the morning, I'm closer to God during the day. That becomes a godly day. And when I don't pray in the morning, when I hit the ground running, which I, I am often tempted to do, it's just my nature, when I hit the ground running, that, that sometimes it is not a godly day, not at all. But I'm, I'm looking at the first part of this. This is something that I will often mention to people who come to confession and say, you know, I, I don't pray for instance, or I don't even have an icon in my bedroom. I don't, I don't do anything spiritual, spiritual normally. Uh, just <coughs> listen to the beginning of this. Let the conviction, <coughs> goodness, let the conviction never leave your thought that a single raising of your mind to God and a single humble genuflection to his glory and his honor has infinitely more value than all the treasures of the world. This is what I often suggest to people, and I suggest this to you right now, and I suggest it to myself, that when you get up in the morning, for instance, you get up in the morning and you, you either have to immediately get your day started or you're just inclined to because it's your personality or whatever that you just give it that one turning of your mind to God this is what I say to the to to people very often you get an icon put it in your room stand before the icon make the sign of the cross and then you begin your day so that at least you have that. If you're not going to do anything else, at least you have that. Now that, you can't do that for the rest of your life. You can't keep doing that and doing that and doing that and saying, well, that was enough. I made the sign of the cross and off I go. No, that's the beginning. That's the connection. 
you know, in, in the running, I, I like to go running as often as I can. And in, in the uh, sport of running, there's a, there's a thing called the baseline. So the baseline is just that your body gets used to running. And so you have to prepare for races, you have to prepare for certain distances and so on. But there are times in your life when you're really, really, really busy or something's going on or you have a little injury or whatever the case may be. In those times, it helps to go out and just maybe run a mile run, uh, you know, a, a little, a mile and a half, two miles, something small, something short, you know, for runners, this would be short, uh, uh, something short that just kind of keeps you in the spirit of doing that sport, keeps you connected, maintains that baseline. For some of us, it's going to be the icon in the bedroom making the sign of the cross and off we go making the sign of the cross and doing the lord's prayer and off we go then making the sign of the cross doing the lord's prayer and adding more prayers to that or reading the daily prayers uh, in the orthodox study bible or whatever the case may be you add to that and uh, and there are many days when you're going to be able to stand there and really connect yourself to god but on the other days you still connect yourself with God in the little way, in that, you know, that, as it said, one genuflection, one giving of honor to God that, that connects you and makes it so that at least you have a fighting chance of that uh, being a godly day. What wonderful advice uh, coming from uh, Unseen Warfare. I, I love this chapter of the book. It goes on uh, for quite some time. The next chapter, uh, we have dealt with uh, de uh, how to control our senses, uh, the, the, the things that we see and hear and touch in the world. Uh, the Unseen Warfare has talked about that, but there's another chapter on it as well with some, uh, some slightly different and equally beneficial device, uh, advice. <laughs> We're going to be looking at that uh, next week. And until then, God bless you, and I'll see you in church.